communications and radar. That's stuff uh, related to HARP directly. Fog and cloud removal, um, detection of hostile weather uh, activities of others, uh, enhanced friendly forces, precipitation avoidance. I mean, it, it just goes on and on. And these are directly out of the military's own uh, record. You know, these aren't things that you have to dig very, uh, very far for. Uh, there's also um, an, another document uh, called Potential Weather Modification Capabilities, Air Force 2025. Mm -hmm. That one's been published by the by the Army and the Air Force. There's another one, um, and it's uh, a hearing before the Subcommittee on International Organizations and the Committee on uh, International Relations, House of Representatives, a uh, prohibition uh, of weather modification as a weapon of war, and that's House Resolution 28 from June, July 29, 1975. So these things hmm. uh, stretch back a long time within our history, uh, and then coming into the more current frame, um, show up again uh, in a much more aggressive way in open military records, much less what's classified. Very interesting. What, what do you think that we can expect in development in, in the future years, and will we see some kind of um, application of, of this technology that could be helpful in in any way in case our you know climate turns you know against us so to speak. Well, I think that's going to be the argument uh, that's proposed by governments as they begin to use this uh, type of technology. But then you're going to have the downwinders, uh, the people who are the recipients of other changes that they didn't plan on. Um, you might get your rainfall in one country and deny it to another. And from my perspective, it complicates. Uh, the relationships between uh, governments, and again, why this has to be open uh, to much broader scrutiny. If, if we're going to start to try and manipulate uh, mm. on a broad scale to counter what is happening, I believe, uh, driven primarily by solar cycles, we're very immature in that process of, of learning. We're, we're like a, uh, a small uh, child uh, with a hand grenade in your hope <laughs> they don't pull the pin. <laughs> the, it's the same mindset. Uh, this is not the domain for military experiments. This hmm. is the domain for uh, high caution, uh, maybe even withdrawal from experimentation until there's a better understanding of how these systems actually work and interrelate. Right, right. I mean, could, do you think that this actually could lead to to war, especially if we if we factor in the the uh, the idea that that water is uh, fresh water is something that is you know scarce on the planet. Absolutely. If you consider, um, well, consider the, the situation in North Korea. You know, and I'm not suggesting that this has happened, but boy, it's been a long time since they've had any rainfall there. Mm -hmm. uh, really? They're starving uh, as a population. Uh, if you could do this, and I, and I believe we can, that we have the technologies today that we can do this, uh, wouldn't that be a way to wage a war without triggering um, the normal uh, consequences of war? Hmm. These are the things that governments are anticipating. These are the things that are pointed to within their own documents, whether it be the Chinese literature uh, in the open uh, uh, materials that our Central Intelligence Agency has translated and declassified, or our own military journals mm. that are published in this area. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. I mean, I, I want to talk a little bit, spend a few minutes here and talk about your uh, your books and also about your DVD series, of course, of so people that are interested in these topics uh, can can learn more and find out more and become more educated about this we have the uh, you said the earth rise and revolution book then we have the angels don't play this harp and your dvd series earth rising uh, how can people uh, get a copies of those in case they're interested um, our website at earthpulse.com e-a-r-t-h-p-u-l-s-e earthpulse.com all of those materials are available there uh, some have been translated uh, into European languages, um, and, and I know we have some of our publications in French and German. Um, German, it's Michael's Verlag uh, in Germany, and uh, all of our books uh, are out with those folks. And we have our newest book, Controlling the Human Mind, which was just released in German and is out in its second, I think it's in second printing here in the U.S. now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's earth, earthpulse.com, and then you also have another website called uh, layinstitute.org. Tell us a, a little bit about that. Yeah, the Lay Institute is the nonprofit side of what we get involved with, and it was set up um, by Dorothy Lay, one of the heirs of uh, uh, Lay PepsiCo um, uh, fame, and she just really got started to get interested and involved in the technology issues, and so we provided a lot of material there. She's sponsored uh, through the Institute 
the first conference on mind effects, and we have, I think, nine or ten hours of uh, video material there that's available for free mm -hmm. uh, that you can watch right online um, of some of our presenters on the mind effects issues and some of the issues that um, we were dealing with uh, in that conference. But a lot of good material there, and it is nonprofit, so everything available uh, on that site is for free. It's free access. Excellent. Layinstitute.org and also earthpulse.com. So uh, me and Nick are going to take a little break right here, but we're going to continue talking more in uh, the subscriber section about mind control and the, uh, how this ties in with the different technologies, the advantages and the dangers. So for uh, this segment, uh, thank you very much, Nick, for coming on. We'll see you on the other side of the break. Thank you so much. going to continue our discussion with Nick Begich in the subscriber section. Just head on over to redicecreations.com and find out how to sign up and tune in. Thank you very much for listening. Red Ice Creations Radio will be back again on Sunday. Until then, take good care.